Now, what's, what's changed now? Okay, we're now in 2010. The main thing, as I see it, is that the debate we had in 2008, we were predicting the hardship that would be caused. What have we got in 2010? We now know the hardship that it's caused. <coughs> Predictions uh, were all correct. We know that someone on minimum wages um, being cut, 80% of minimum wages, um, is going to find it that much tougher. No significant improvements in the unfunded liability, the administrative costs continuing to, to blow out. In fact, uh, Julia Davidson, who worked CEO 2006, when she was appointing uh, uh, EML as the uh, monopoly outsourced claim agent, she promised the new arrangements would uh, uh, cut claims liability by up to $100 million a year after only two years. I don't know what happened to that. Um, the administrative costs, as I say, blown out. In relation to claims outsourcing, I think that has been a failure, the, the single outsourcing. Um, I might talk to Ian about it later. I'm not convinced going to multiple private operators to do uh, the claims management is the way to go. It seems to me that the claims management is such an integral and important part of the whole process, it needs to be publicly controlled. I wouldn't have uh, private companies doing it. Um, speaking of private companies, one of the campaigns that I've been running um, is a campaign uh, It's called Democracy for Sale. <coughs> I'm very worried at the influence of big corporations <coughs> making donations to political parties in return for favours. Now they say they're only giving money because they love democracy. <laughs> Look at the Australian Electoral Commission return for 2008-2009. Guess who gave $10,000 to the South Australian Labor Party? Mm -hmm. EML. You know, it is a rotten system when uh, you have big corporations with monopoly arrangements with government uh, giving donations to the political party uh, in power. I understand that uh, uh, Ian, uh, they're keen to reduce the uh, payments that the employers make, their levies. Um, would it be great to reduce the levies uh, on employers? Absolutely it would be great. But you do not reduce the levies until the system is fixed because what the government was proposing when they said we're going to both cut <coughs> injured workers in and we're going to cut the levies, that was effectively a transfer of wealth from injured workers to their employers. There is no other way of seeing it. So yes, in the long run, uh, there may be room, but not until we've had a complete overhaul of the system. The return to work rates have, have improved and we've got a much better rehabilitation uh, system as well. So in terms of what happens uh, from now, the Greens uh, are in Parliament uh, already. I'm in for another uh, four years, as, as Anne is. Uh, we hope to have more people elected in this next election and we will bring work cover uh, back onto the agenda. Whether it's Ian's lot in government or the other lot, uh, we will try to get cross-party support for amendments uh, that do fix up the worst excesses of the system. I just want to finish, I was going to read some material, but you've heard enough from politicians, I'll just refer briefly to an email that I got today, and, and uh, it was a follow-up from one I got last week. Um, an injured policeman, a bloke who's, who's had 13 injuries, he, he's on the job, he's, he's in high-speed chases and, and, and dealing with violent people. And his experiences um, as an injured worker have been absolutely abysmal. And the sort of things he says in his long letter to me, things that you've all heard and you've all said because many of you have written to me as well. We just want our lives back, you know. Um, I'm pretty much resigned to the fact that I'll have to leave my career, a career that I've enjoyed and achieved a great deal of success on. Um, and, you know, despite the injuries, um, you know, I used to think it was part and parcel of the occupation. Um, well, no, it's not, actually. You should have a safe system of work, but policing is a bloody dangerous thing. That we're dealing with dangerous people. But the experiences that he's had uh, with his claims managers, I, I think, uh, um, Di, you said uh, Don had had six or seven, I think. This place nine. Now, I don't know what the record is. But, you know, how do you feel that you're being looked after, you know, when it's just this conga line of, of um, you know, one agent after another, each of whom you've got to tell your story to again uh, afresh. So. Um, I'd like to thank all of those injured workers who've shared their stories with me. Um, I've done what I can so far with help from Anne and the crossbenchers. Um, I'm in for four more years. This has not dropped off our radar and I look forward to bringing more work cover amendments back and hopefully we can shame the major parties into overturning the most draconian, most draconian of the changes that came in in that uh, 2008 legislation. Thanks very much. Thank you.